Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we're talking about this S1K. This is Noah back here. This bike has 25,000 miles. Miles, not kilometers. Look at that, 25,597. Oh yeah. So today, I'm gonna ask Noah a bunch of questions about this bike, because it's got 25K miles. I wanna know what's going on with it, how it's been running, maintenance he's done. Then we're gonna go for a rip. All right, now tell me a little bit more about 25,000 miles on this thing. It is looking clean too, look at that. Okay. Yeah, so there's honestly not a lot to talk about in a certain way. The 2016, 199 horsepower, 183 foot pounds. It has been really good to me. You maintain it as you should, pretty strict about that. Oil changes every 3,000 miles. They say seven, I think that's way too long for a bike that revs 14,000 RPMs. <laughs> yeah. Machine, really. Yeah. So every 3,000 miles do oil change? Nice. Miles I do. They say seven. Yeah, I cut that in half. Um, tires about, depends on what tire you get. Um, what are these? The Michelins? The Michelin, Michelin power. power. Fives, They're nice. And I'm hoping I can at least get 4,000 miles out of them. I'm at two something, I think, right now. 2,000 miles on this. Let's and look at the, the rear tire little closer to the wear bar yeah so tires go quick especially on the later bike oh yeah i gotta say dude the carbon look at this carbon guys that looks so pretty he's got carbon these are the adjustable rear sets got the carbon got a tail tidy what else we got oh this is my favorite look at this carbon bit right here for the silencer holder that's awesome Probably yeah exhaust or just uh pretty sweet did it come with these um no those guards the, those put on put the gb racing engine guards on you know you never know don't want to poke a hole in my engine case <laughs> yeah so you guys have seen this guy you guys have seen his bike on the channel obviously i know a whole bunch um the zh2 is you know these two bikes like they're both crazy power this bike has crazy top end speed um once he gets you know when we're on the drag strip once he gets like to 120, 130, he's passing me. I can beat him to 130-ish. And then after that, I'm just uh, getting left in the dust. This is the 2016, so it has the Cyclops front end, which is pretty cool. I think it's super unique. So asymmetrical, asymmetrical design. I love it. Yeah, I it's pretty it sweet. Year. So you guys may not know this, and I just learned this the other day. This bike is based on the 2000... Five? 2005. 2005 Jixer that won the national championship or world championship. So that would be the K5, K6. Yep. So BMW apparently bought 10 of these and kind of like replicated it. Obviously, this is probably way better. It's got way newer technology. Um, uh, it's got cruise control, ABS, kind of everything you'd expect. Yeah, a little. So Noah, the, the, uh, they based it on the Jixer, but you're saying mostly on the engine. Mostly yeah, they, it was their focus on the, you know, K5, K6, Jigster, inline four is what they, I mean, all the whole package because it was a winning bike championship, but BMW already had really popular touring brakes and cafe racers and adventure bikes. Yeah, at time in the yeah, yeah. 2000s. But they didn't have a well-performing inline four. They got the quick so shifter. This is... What they mainly took from the Jigster was how to make a reliable high horsepower inline four yeah that, well this does the job yeah definitely it goes all the way to it is a beautiful thousand. dude the blue and white is my favorite like color scheme like i've seen the red beamers i've seen the the black and blue is pretty sweet but the blue and white is just like it's what it's kind of just like you see this and you automatically know from the colors it's a beamer uh, are these puig are these aftermarket Okay, so the little fins are aftermarket. Nice. Is this carbon front piece aftermarket too? All the carbon. Is All the carbon is aftermarket. Okay. All right. All right. Every, every bit. He's done every bit. He every says bit. this ain't the cheap stuff. Not the Chinese. <laughs> yeah. Any issues? You got any issues? Yeah. I. No I engine problems. No engine problems. No braking no. clutch problems. Nothing like that. No. No electronic problems. No electronic, no electronic problems. problems. It does have the electronic suspension and it's still working incredibly well after 25,000 miles. Nice. Have the main service you did with this was you took it to the dealer 
at like 16, 15,000 miles? Uh, 18,000. 18, and you did the valve, valve adjustment. And just, uh, every 18,000 miles or every, yeah, 18,000 miles is a new valve, valve adjustment and new spark plug. New spark plug, okay. And air box. They probably do coolant and everything too, I'd imagine. Coolant, brakes, clutch play. Oh, okay. So that's like the big that's service. Yearly. Oh, okay. It's, they do that. I bring it into the dealer yearly for them to check, for them to do a brake flush, check the pads, um, basically do a once over. There's a really annoying service light that comes on. Oh, okay. Um, every year that only the BMW. I'll show you where it happens. So right now, it it covers your engine temperature. Oh, uh, so you little, can't see it so when it pops on. <laughs> yeah, so that's they, kind of annoying. <laughs> if it covered anything else, I might wait. But the fact of that you can't see your internal temperature, uh, yeah, bring it into them once a year. I do the oil changes, change the brake pads, all this stuff, because I'll just tack on 100 bucks, 100 bucks, 100 <laughs> yeah. bucks. So if I can keep it in the three under $500 range for them to do it all, and just do a once over and reset the service light. I mean, a bike like this, I want to make sure it goes and stops as well as it possibly can. Yeah, definitely. So, With the yeah, high performance, got to treat it like it. Yeah. It visits the dealer. For <laughs> that makes sense. Well, let's hear some revs real quick. He's got this big Acroprovic on there with the carbon. Like I said, this carbon hanger, you had to wait for that for a while, huh? A long so it, time. You had to wait for that carbon hanger to probably make it or whatever, but. Um, from Germany or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it sounds good. Oh, guys, this is the HP race, too. This is the actual race exhaust. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. She's mean. There you go. Go. All right, guys, so we are going to hop on the bikes. I'm actually going to hop on the S1K. Noah here is going to ride the ZH2. Noah's ridden the ZH2, but uh, short, period. short period of time. And I I don't know. I don't even remember what I had done at that point, but um, not a lot. It was pretty stock when he rode it. It's still pretty stock. Oh, steering dampener. I think it was day one. Yeah, so I never had the steering dampener when he rode it, so it was kind of sketchy. Yeah, he's like, nah, I don't want to ride that shit. So we're going to swap bikes. I'm going to hop on the S1K. We're going to do some pulls. We're going to hit some twisties and just see what it's all about. Also, real quick, I just want to show you. This is the chin mount. With last video, we explained that I had a chin mount. But I just want to show you guys. I ordered this from chinmounts.com. This is my little microphone adapter, which definitely shows up in some of the videos when I'm looking this way. You can see like the little black line in the video. That's what that's from. I'm about to hop on. He was just telling me the bike only comes with three different riding modes from the factory. It's a uh, rain, like a sport, rain road, and then a race. But each level has a certain level of traction control. There is no turning the traction control all the way off unless you buy a little dongle, um, install the dongle, and then you can ride full traction control off. So, yeah, that's what Noah was saying. So, because I position i'm so not <laughs> i'm so not <laughs> i'm so not used to this riding position <laughs> it's a lot different than the zh2 man oh it is so light dude guys this thing oh my gosh this is so light compared to the zh2 let's do it No, I'll have you come up here next to me too, or in front of me. Oh, no. oh wow, alright. <laughs> oh, those quick shifts are smooth. It looks pretty good on that, buddy. <laughs> This thing definitely is more agile than that. I tell you what, like I can just feel it. It likes to lean. 
And this thing, so these S1Ks, man, it's like 8,000 and on, it's crazy power. It, it just kicks in. It's crazy fast. Like a lot of top end speed and top end power on these things. I do notice a little more vibration on this compared to um, compared to the ZH2. There's a little bit more vibration, for sure, but not to kind of get used to it. 15 minutes at least to kind of get a good feel for it, in my opinion. Oh, we got a big ass dust cloud. Uh oh. Shifts are so smooth. Yeah, this thing rides pretty good. We're on a, we're kind of on a rough road, so. Hey, though, this thing just feels like it wants the corner a lot more than the ZDH2, or even my MT10. Like when you're in the corners, it just feels like it wants to lean. It, it leans so easy. It's nice. My, the ZDH2 kind of almost feels like it wants to stand back up just a little bit. You should not be in the middle of the road like that, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh my gosh, AirPods, <laughs> no shirt, <laughs> no F's given. This thing is pretty smooth. Shifting smooth, the braking's really smooth, I mean... I just, it, it's really like, it feels to me a lot more agile than that, than the HZ H2 is. Do you notice that too? Yeah. Right here, right here. It's really fun to swap bikes, honestly, because like, it, it's almost just like adding a whole new experience to riding <laughs> street bikes. It's fun. I gotta say, like, uh, like the initial, the initial bite on the ZH2 is better, but once this kind of like starts building up, it just turns into like an exponential rocket. It's awesome. <laughs> Oh man, where do I get those? <laughs> I mean, overall, I really like this bike. I think it's sweet. It rides well. It shifts really well. It fe it feels like a lot more agile than the ZH2 does. Like in the corners, it just feels more agile. Oh, I see the temperature climbing real quick now. 200, <laughs> 202. Oh yeah. 25k miles. Let's see how long it'll last. How many miles do you think you can get out of this thing? 50? Yeah, 50k miles would be sweet. That just goes to show, I mean, I've seen some, I've seen YouTube videos out there. People have issues with the Beamers. Maybe it's the new generation, but obviously, you know, this is like 2016. It's got 25k miles, no issues. So keep good maintenance on it and they last. front brake bites really well on this thing. Oh, I'm not even trying to wheelie. We're 
gear are you in? What gear are you in, Eric? Here, go to go to second real quick. Yeah, I'm in second. Well, you guys, that is a 25k mile review on this bike. No problems, regular maintenance, running super strong, really fast. I mean, everything on this bike is really smooth and it's impressive, so pretty sweet. Shout out to Noah for letting me take it for a rip and check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you on the next one.